Hello everyone, and welcome to the demo session on how to analyze your physiological MRI data for CEST. In this presentation, I'll be walking you through how to process, analyze, and review CEST MRI data. First, some introduction on CEST. So, chemical exchange saturation transfer, or CEST, is an MRI contrast technique in which selective saturation is performed on compounds containing exchangeable protons. So basically in tissue, we have an abundance of water represented by the water pool here. And we also have labile pools. So labile pool refers to any functional group such as amide that undergoes chemical exchange with water pool when a radio frequency pulse is applied to its resonance. So basically, in the MRI scanner, we apply a radio frequency pulse at the resonance frequency of this label pool. And this causes the protons within the label pool to become saturated. And because of a chemical exchange process happening between label and water pool here, this saturation is actually transferred over to water pool. And when we measure the signal coming from water pool, we get this spectrum known as the Z-spectrum. And basically this small dip here is what is due to this cest effect happening between label and water pool. And this cest effect is what allows us to indirectly detect previously undetectable low concentration solute molecules. And the reason why this is very useful is because it allows us a non-invasive way to measure biophysical and physiological properties. And this has a very broad range of applications. So an example of CEST MRI is APT or amide proton transfer. And this is basically measuring the CEST effect at 3.5 ppm on the Z spectrum. And APT concerns the amide protons in the backbone of proteins and peptides in tissue. So one of the appeals of using APT MRI is that it is pH sensitive. So for example, if we apply APT MRI on ischemic stroke patients, we can actually see a decrease in the APT effect within the ischemic lesions. And this is basically due to a drop in the intracellular pH due to ischemia. Okay, so once we acquire our CES data, how do we go about quantifying the CES effect? So there are actually a number of ways that we can do this. And one of those ways is by using model-based analysis. So basically model-based analysis makes use of the block McConnell equations in order to model the underlying CES processes of the system that we're investigating. And this allows us to characterize both the signal characteristics of water, as well as the exchange of protons between the pools of interest and the water pool. And because we're actually modeling the CES processes, we're taking into account all of the confounding factors within the CES system. And basically, this allows us to quantify a more pure CES effect compared to other conventional model-free methods. And model-based analysis is also more robust to noise because we're performing model fitting. So the quantitative metric that we are calculating through model-based analysis is called CESTAR star. And basically these are the steps that we use to perform model-based analysis in order to calculate this metric. So first we fit the block McConnell equations to the acquired CES data. And through the model fitting process, we obtain our fitted Z spectrum as well as the fitted parameters of the model. So this includes the exchange rates, the concentrations, relaxation times of the different pools within the system. And using these fitted parameters that we obtain from the model fitting, we then use the Block McConnell equations to simulate an idealized one pool system consisting of just water, as well as an idealized two pool system consisting of both water and the pool of interest. 
Then to calculate Cestar star, star, we simply take the difference between these two idealized Z spectrums at the offset of interest. So for example, for amide, we would calculate the difference between these two spectrums at 3.5 ppm. So to perform model-based analysis, as well as the other steps within the CES data analysis pipeline, which I will describe next, we can make use of Quantifies, which is a visualization and analysis tool for 3D and 4D biomedical data. Okay, so next I will run you through the standard CES data analysis pipeline using Quantifies. So in a standard pipeline for CES data analysis, first we start with brain extraction, followed by registration to correct for motion. Then we perform B0 inhomogeneity correction. And for this step, depending on the CES quantification method that you'll be using, you may or may not need to perform B0 correction separately. So for example, if you're using model-based analysis, you don't need to perform B0 correction separately because the model fitting process already inherently takes into account the Z spectrum shift due to inhomogeneity. So after you've quantified your CES effect, you can then visualize your output and then extract quantitative metrics from your output. So firstly, we perform brain extraction on the data. So first we load the data onto quantifies. Then we use FSL's brain extraction tool to generate a binary mask of the brain. So once we've generated our brain mask, we can then perform registration to correct for motion. And one of the methods that we can use to perform this registration is by using the FLIRT tool from FSL. And the reference volume here for the registration, it is conventional to either use the unsaturated image or an image very far away from water resonance. So once we've confirmed that our registration was successful, we can then quantify our assessed effect and we'll be using the model-based analysis for this example using the Quantices widget in Quantifies. So to perform the model-based analysis, we first enter our acquisition parameters for the model fitting. So basically, we just enter the sequence and frequency offsets that were acquired during our assessed experiment. Then, we specify our pool parameters, including the number of pools and which pools we'll be modeling. And for this, it does depend on the CES data that you have. So for example, the field strength you're using, the saturation scheme you're using. But in general, a minimum of three pools should be included for model-based analysis. And the common pools to include are water, amide, and a combined pool of MT and NOE. So these are the provided pool parameters for the common pools for model-based analysis. And these parameters will be used for the model fitting process. And you can also use this dialog box to change these values. For example, if you're using a custom field strength. Then before running the model-based analysis, you can select the output that you'd like to see, including star star, star the parameter maps, and also the model fit then you can go ahead and run the model-based analysis. Then once the model-based analysis has finished running, you can then go ahead and visualize the process data. So just have a quick check on the model fitting through the voxel analysis widget. And basically just take a look at different voxels just to see how well the model fitted to your data. And we do this by basically examining the Z spectrum of the fitted model as well as the experimental data. And besides that, we can also take a look at the CEST R star map generated through the analysis. So for example, if we are interested in the amide pool and we want to look at the CEST R star map of amide, just select CEST R star amide from the overlay selector and we will be able to see this map. And looking at this CESTAR star map, we can see that around the outer edge of the tumor, CESTAR star amide is actually elevated. 
And before we extract the quantitative metrics from the ROIs, we can apply data smoothing by using a Gaussian kernel just to smooth out the tiny, tiny variations within the SESTAR star map. Then in the final stage of the pipeline, we extract quantitative metrics from different ROIs that we want to look at. So for example, here we want to look at the SESTAR star values from the tumor as well as the contralateral masks. So we can use the ROI builder widget here to draw a mask opposite to the tumor as the contralateral mask. So then we use the data statistics widget to display the statistics about the SESTAR star amide values within the two masks. And looking at the mean, we can confirm that SESTAR star amide is indeed elevated within the tumor compared to the contralateral normal tissue. And so that concludes the standard SES data analysis pipeline and how to perform the processing and analysis using quantifies. And with that, I would like to end this presentation here. Thank you for your attention.